like most important experiences in my life, the Gospel of Damascus has a life of its own. It wasn't even supposed to be a novel. It, initially, it was supposed to be a scholarly study of Damascus in sacred literature, biblical, extra biblical, Quran, Hadith, and then somehow that became the, the Epistle of Eliza, which is found in, in the English uh, version as an annex. But then it became a novel, and then someone decided they want to publish it and then others wanted to translate it and, and here we are in 2016 on the eve of it being published in, in, in four languages it's very exciting and I, I find myself just sitting down and watching this event unfold as far as uh, the genre of where to uh, place the gospel of damascus i'm personally attracted to to the genre of um, magic realism don't really like classification. I, I think possibly it could work under magic realism if you qualify it with maybe magic spiritual realism. There is such a thing because of the deep spiritual nature and purpose of, of, uh, of the novel. I'm often asked whether or not this, this uh, has a, an autobiographical aspect to it. I, I think to me, it's, I'm not quite sure how to answer this question because I feel like most fiction is, is inspired by, by actual events. I mean, where else would, would, would the inspiration come from? But I think it's, it's often disguised, heavily disguised. I think what I try to do in, in, in the Gospel of Damascus is, is get rid of all the disguises. I did go to McAllister, I, I studied at Penn, I went back to Damascus, I worked for the UN. So, so all of this is indeed actual events. However, that's just a framework. What actually took place within, within these moments is, is where the imagination takes over. So it'd be quite strange if you're trying to understand my life through the Gospel of Damascus, unless you're simply focusing on major headings like, oh, okay, so he studied here, or he was born in Damascus, or things of this type. But, but, but beyond that, of course, it's, it's a very, uh, that's where it, it's, it's, it's a work of fiction. As far as characters uh, in, in the Gospel of Damascus, of course, Many of them are inspired by, by actual, real characters that I've been blessed to know in my life. Perhaps most importantly is, is the character of Yahya Nuri, which is uh, heavily based on, uh, on my spiritual mentor or teacher, Bashir al-Bani, who, who died in 2008 at the age of 97. An amazing Damascene spiritual scholar, upbringer. I, uh, I was blessed with, it was over 23 years of proximity to this man and uh, it, it always stays with me. He, and he, took me, he would take me everywhere. He even took me to Milan. We visited uh, Cardinal uh, Martini, who was at the time the Archbishop of Milan. This was in 2000, October 2000. It was an interfaith uh, event and before the event, uh, was to start, we, we met Cardinal Martini in this closed uh, session, so to speak, and uh, the Cardinal was a very prestigious uh, man, he had stature and he was tall and he, s he sat down and he gave this formal theological discussion of, of interfaith dialogue between Islam and Christianity and then he asked Bashir al-Bani to, to say something and people expected something of, of like nature, something formal and uh, but, but uh, Bashir Bani wasn't like that at all. He, he took hold of uh, Cardinal Martini's hand, he looked at him in his eyes and he said, I've been trying to dream of Mary for 15 years and, and the Cardinal said, Mary the mother of Christ? He said, yes, Mary the mother of Christ, 15 years and uh, I haven't been able to do so. What, do you, can you help me with this? And the cardinal called on one of his assistants and they brought books and the Bashir Ben said, no, no, no books. And uh, have you experienced this? And the cardinal said, no, you know, I, I, I haven't myself and I, I would love to as well. But when I was a child, I dreamt of this and then Bashir Ben started sharing his dreams and, and suddenly all these religious boundaries fell apart and, and there was just two men talking about the way in which they relate to God. And that was the beauty of Bashir al-Bani, the way you just break through these artificial walls and, and, and delve into the spiritual experience, which I tried to capture in, in the Gospel of Damascus. 
when I started writing uh, The Gospel of Damascus, of course, the tragic in the events in Syria had already uh, started to unfold. This was uh, 2011. And even then, we already could speak about the hundreds, eventually thousands, perhaps now close to millions, of killed and wounded and detained and uh, displaced and exiled and refugees. It's, it's, uh, I've, over the last five years, I've watched my country systematically destroyed. And, and the tragedy continues. And I, I think what I tried to capture in the, in the Gospel of Damascus is a message of hope and optimism. And the quote that I use at the beginning of, of the novel is, is uh, very close to my heart from, from the letters to the Apostles. Some to the effect of, Behold, out of uh, Syria, I will bring forth a new Jerusalem. In the same way that the Syrian tragedy has now had global implications in, in a tragic sense, I, I pray and hope that one day we'll see Syria, Damascus in particular, with global implications of a very different nature, of a, of a positive nature, of an optimistic nature.